But as I close, I will talk about some of the factors that we're going to be facing. We are the first jurisdiction uh, and the only jurisdiction to pass a budget before fiscal year end. Our fiscal year end is March 31st. And you'll have to go back a long time in history to have a budget passed by government before the fiscal year end. Well, our budget is passed. Other provinces are just introducing their budgets. And across the country of Canada, it is a bit of a scary situation. Ontario just uh, announced their budget, and they will be debating it. It's going to be a $20 billion deficit, adding to a debt, an accumulated debt of over $200 billion. So not only is Ontario going to be borrowing money currently to cover off their deficit, they also have to pay the interest on the $200 billion that they owe to the banks today. It's the same situation across Canada. Quebec is running a deficit of 3.9 billion, a debt of 218 billion. Manitoba has a debt of 23 billion, and British Columbia's debt is estimated at around 47 billion. So what all this means is all these jurisdictions are really spending themselves into a position where they might be forced to cut programs and services even more than what they've announced in the budgets. Important programs for seniors, health, education, I know are going to be reduced in significant numbers if the economy, the general Canadian economy, does not recover. And it is a concern, it's a concern for me personally, because as we are going to debate uh, how much money do we save in the future, and how do we, do we legislate the savings account, how do we prepare for this, I tell you in our worst economic period, in my time, 2009, the net contribution to Ottawa from Alberta was $21.1 billion. Over the last 10 years, it was $131 billion. So it's a substantial contribution, uh, and most of that going to Ottawa, which then goes to other provinces through equalization. But the issue here is that well, Alberta has to maintain the programs in health and education and look at tuition fee increases. Today in Quebec, tuition are $2,100. With a net transfer of uh, not only an equalization, an equalization, but other transfers, of so Canada Health Transfer and Social Tax Transfer to Quebec, I am sure total about $18 billion. It's just the one province. If you look at Ontario, they're now a have not province. They won't be paying into an equalization where Manitoba still receives support. The maritime provinces receive support. So we will be the only province where the economy is going to pick up. We'll be generating tax revenue, uh, not only to the Alberta government, but certainly to the federal government. And it is a concern because most of these jurisdictions won't get back in the black till 2017, 18, and could be as far as 2019. That's a, that's a long period of, the, of accumulating debt in provinces across the country. So I support the Prime Minister in his quest to get back to balanced budgets. He does have a difficult task, but uh, I know that we've, we've got to get together with the other provinces and start working out some of the issues with respect to the fiscal imbalance that we have in, in uh, the country of Canada. My commitment to you is that we will not be increasing taxes, we will not be introducing new taxes, will stay the course. That is why we passed the budget to provide predictability, not only for the business sector, but for all workers. And this is the course we're going to take. We will be in the black, as I said, by 2012-13. And uh, I haven't heard from any clients that said, when you increase taxes during a, a, a recession, that it's going to help you recover from the recession. The more uh, money that's left in the pockets of all workers, the more money they spend in the economy, and 60% uh, of course of, uh, of the economy is consumer spend. So you know, whether uh, you buy a jacket to uh, make some improvements uh, to the home or whatever, wherever you spend your money, going to the theater, uh, whatever, you're, you're, you're helping the economy grow. And that is, that is imperative uh, that we keep the optimism of our workers. And, and quite frankly, it continues to be the highest uh, in Canada. So with that, um, 
uh, once again for thanking uh, each and every one of you for, for uh, taking the time. It's, uh, a lot of uh, students have uh, assembled here, and I really appreciate the fact that you're here and uh, an opportunity to, to dialogue and, and hear from you. So, Kevin, uh, we're open for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for the <laughs> So the floor will now be open for questions. There is a mic up there.